This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness and keeping you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with one in under 48 hours. You'll get quick and thoughtful responses and you can schedule weekly video or phone calls. So say goodbye to stuffy waiting rooms. It's all from the comfort of your own home. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Death Battle, that's Better H-E-L-P, and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with professional help. And as a special offer for Death Battle viewers, you can get 10% off your first month by going to BetterHelp.com slash Death Battle. Dio Brando. Everlasting adversary of the Joestar bloodline. Alucard, undying enforcer of the Helsing organization. Vampires, the spawn of nightmares formed from the blackest pits of man's demented imagination. Anime, basically the same thing. What do you get when you combine them? Two of the meanest monsters out there. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Imagine, if you can, someone so wicked that the sheer magnitude of their unholy dickishness literally destroyed the universe. You might think they'd have to be no less than the devil himself, but it was him, Dio. Born a penniless street rat with a cunning mind in the slums of Victorian London, Dio was humiliated by his poverty and abused by his alcoholic father. His bitter resentment and small dick energy would lead to a lifelong desire for ultimate power and immortality to reach a place over heaven. And he'd get his chance to act when he was adopted into the wealthy Joestar family. Dio planned to kill his new father, George Joestar, and take his fortune for himself. Only one thing stood in his way, his new brother, Jonathan Joestar, AKA Jojo. Dio tried to go all Alpha Wolf on Jojo by engaging in such classic sibling pranks as beating him up, molesting his girlfriend, and setting his dog on fire. Jesus! You give that creepy dog murderer what for, Jojo? But after years of emotional manipulation, Dio's twisted assassination plot was foiled by his righteous stepbrother. With help from the interfering speed wagon, all seemed lost until Dio pulled out his plan B, an ancient stone mask that turned him into a vampire. That's just bizarre. Okay, so he's not technically a vampire like, say, Dracula. Instead of turning you into an unholy demon, the stone mask eliminates your body's natural limitations. Making him way stronger, faster, and tougher than any human, he can hear a heartbeat through the ground, fly through the air, and hypnotize you with just a glance. It gets weirder. Dio can create mind-controlling flesh buds from his hair follicles, vaporize the moisture in his body to freeze anything he touches, and fire beams of pressurized fluids that can split the sky. Pressurized fluids? <laughs> oh, sometimes it's too easy, Wiz. Even more insane is Dio's healing factor. He's been burnt alive, impaled through the head, bisected, decapitated, lost limbs, filled with bullets, and had a huge hole punched in his chest not once, not twice, but three times. Another similar vampire, Straight, survived being blown to pieces and just pulled himself back together. All Dio needs is some blood to speed up the process, so he is basically a vampire. Though I guess the fangs are just for decoration because he sucks blood through his fingers. Ugh. Dio used his powers to raise a zombie army to conquer the world and feed a baby to its own mother. Just for kicks. We've had a lot of real pieces of shit on this show, Wiz, but I'm starting to think Dio takes the cake. Luckily, his plans were foiled again by his old frenemy Jojo, who beat Dio's ass with a martial art that uses the power of the sun, Hamon. Because should Dio's vampire body be subjected to sunlight, he will instantly disintegrate. So what did Dio do? Well, he cut off his own head, killed Jonathan on his wedding night, and attached his head to Jojo's body. Wow. Cake taken, for sure. After a brief century in a coffin at the bottom of the ocean, Dio resurfaced in Egypt and tried once again to take over the world. His ultimate goal was to create a world where everyone knew their own fate and could make peace with the inevitable tragedies life had in store. In Dio's mind, heaven. And he'd make it happen no matter how many breads he'd have to eat. After being struck by a mystical arrow, sure, why not, Dio gained a stand. 
the embodiment of a user's life force. Since they're made of psychic energy, stands can only be seen by stand users and can only be hurt by other stands. Quite the obstacle for any opponent lacking similar abilities. Ow! Hey, look, Wiz, I got a stand! I call it 99 Bottles! Hold up! Oh, shit! Uh, don't worry, Wiz, I'll change you back with your D Transmo. D -d Transmaga. D Transmaga. Ooh, look, a giant beer! As befits a god among men, Dio received one of the most powerful stands in history, the World Water Dome, with its ability to stop time. Time, huh? Thanks for the- Ow! Well, not only does his time stop get longer with each use, he can spam it as much as he likes. He's a massive troll. The world is absurdly strong and fast, able to match the stand Star Platinum, which belongs to Jonathan's great-great-grandson, Jotaro Kujo. He technically inherited it from Dio through Jonathan's body and bloodline, making Star Platinum and the world the same stand. And both are two of the strongest stands out there, just as strong as Stone Free, which can punch meteors that were pulled to Earth in seconds. By measuring the distance the meteors are from Earth, we can estimate they were moving at over 11 million meters per second. Factoring in their mass, they'd each have a kinetic energy of 441 kilotons of TNT. Not that crazy when you can throw punches that are faster than light. No, really, Star Platinum kept up with this stand, Silver Chariot, which could cut a beam of light. Looking at the interval Silver Chariot's sword swung relative to the light beam, it must have moved over 1,500 times the speed of light. And Dio himself has matched Star Platinum on his own and taken its punches head on. Yeah, yeah, but that's nothing compared to Dio's secret weapon, the greatest weapon in anime history! The Steamroller! Turns out Dio's a hell of a chef. He can make pancakes and donuts. Even so, despite having a massive god complex, Dio's still a careful tactician capable of exploiting an opponent's weaknesses. Too bad he wasn't prepared for Jotaro to learn how to stop time too and murder the shit out of him. That's some hardcore karma right there. But it only makes sense that a dog murderer would die like a bitch. But much like the machinations of great and terrible men, Dio's will was immortal. In time, his greatest follower succeeded in extinguishing the Joestar bloodline and literally remaking the universe in Dio's image, creating that heaven he always dreamed of. I guess when you're named after a rock star, a movie star, and uh, oh, that's right, God, you're pretty much bound for greatness. You thought your first kiss would be Jojo, but it was I, Dio! How blessed are some people whose lives have no fears, no dreads. For though the world seems full of good men, there are monsters in it. But don't worry, jolly old England has it covered with the Helsing Organization. Founded by famous vampire hunter Abraham Van Helsing and led by his descendant Integra, this secret government institution has saved the world time and again with their secret weapon. And what better weapon to hunt vampires than with one of their very own, the No-Life King, the Bird of Hermes, Alucard. To most, his origin was shrouded in mystery. But under Helsing's employ, he was molded into an elite hunter, made even more vicious by his intense hatred of his fellow vampire kind. A hatred that he expresses with two of the gnarliest handguns you'll ever pray to your infinite god to never see in person. Alucard's primary sidearm is the Castle, a behemoth of a handgun able to kill most undead in one shot with holy bullets that can nullify a vampire's healing factor. The Jekyll is the handgun she told you not to worry about. 16 inches long and weighing 35 pounds, it's armor-piercing, hollow-point bullets, jacketed in blessed Macedonian silver, were built to annihilate the toughest monsters. And after decades of clandestine experimentation, Helsing enhanced Alucard's vampiric abilities far beyond the norm. Alucard can walk through walls, cast illusions, levitate, and move objects with his mind. Objects like, say, an ocean of over three million people's blood? That'd be an energy worth half a ton of TNT. His psychic prowess allows him to read minds, communicate telepathically, hypnotize with a glance, and see through hallucinations with his third eye. He's not a triclops. It's more of a sixth sense that lets him hit bullseyes from a kilometer away and even predict your movements. Kind of like the Sharon gun. 
Of course, he wouldn't be a real vampire if he couldn't drink blood. The catch is, when he drinks enough blood to kill you, he literally absorbs your soul. And that right there is the source of his most fearsome ability. You just can't kill the son bitch! Shoot him into Swiss cheese, blow his ass to smithereens, turn him into a literal blood puddle? He'll just regenerate his body lickety split! Like, we've seen some overpowered healing factors on this show before, but Alucard's is just bullshit! While he does possess blood and organs like a regular human, Alucard's body is, in reality, composed of an ethereal, shadow-like substance that he can morph any way he wants. This allows him to shapeshift and instantly heal any wound, and each soul Alucard has consumed acts as an extra life that he can spend whenever he's fatally injured. Kind of like a video game. And after 500 years of unlife, Alucard has consumed literally millions of souls. Hold up. Yay, more beer! Just like me. Hold up. Helsing needed a beast as fearsome as Alucard to take on Millennium, aka Nazi vampires. That's like evil squared. Like when Millennium SS Lieutenant Rip Van Winkle commandeered a British aircraft carrier as part of an invasion of London. Alucard didn't like that very much, so he jackknifed it with an SR-71 Blackbird at Mach 3. A fully loaded Blackbird weighs 170,000 pounds, meaning it's struck with the kinetic energy of 11 tons of TNT. That's as powerful as the US Massive Ordnance Air Blast. AKA the mother of all bombs! And Al was in the middle of that and strolled out like it was nothing. Just as impressive as intercepting Rip's magic bullets. Comparing the distance one bullet moved to the jet in the same time frame as the jet's own movement, each bullet would have to be moving at 1,500 times the speed of sound. And Alucard caught one with his friggin' teeth! And after giving Rip's name a new meaning, he drove that aircraft carrier back to shore with his mind to fight two separate armies at the same time. What a goddamn monster! It goes without saying that Alucard's immense power and bloodlust needed to be controlled, so six restriction levels were placed on him that he can release against dangerous opponents. Level 6 through 2 are for wrecking your ordinary ghouls. Level 1 is for your heavy-duty vampires and for getting this gnarly demon doggo made from his shadow essence, Baskerville. But there exists an even greater state of power Alucard can release when he wants to end the world. Level 0. Once activated, Level Zero releases every single soul Alucard has consumed as a sea of blood-soaked zombies. All three million of them. Sure, with his souls gone, he can't heal as easily, and if his heart is destroyed, he'll die permanently. But the sheer numbers and power of this army from hell makes him virtually impossible to approach in the first place. He's unstoppable! This guy's got to be like the king of all vampires! Indeed, he is. Helsing purposely kept Alucard's true identity a secret, all in the codename. Alucard backwards is... Dracula? Yeah, duh, Wiz, idiot. Over 500 years ago, the Wallachian Voivode Vlad Dracula battled the Ottoman Turks for control over Eastern Europe and impaled thousands of people in the process. Hence his historical name, Vlad the Impaler. But things didn't end up too good for him. Right before his execution, he took a big old sip of some blood from the battlefield, sacrificing his humanity in order to become an immortal creature of the night. And that is when the legend was born. But it wasn't anything Dracula was proud of. He grew to despise his monstrous nature and saw it as cowardice. The main reason he hated other vampires so much was that he really hated himself. No, oh, that's deep, Wiz. Maybe that's why he always lets his enemies rip into him like a pinata of self-loathing. His crazy OP healing factor will fix everything anyways. Millennium would exploit this arrogance by tricking Alucard into absorbing the soul and abilities of Schrodinger, a German cat boy who controls his own quantum state. This grants him pseudo-omnipresence and immortality. He can exist everywhere and nowhere and cannot die so long as he can recognize his own existence. But because Al had three million souls kicking around inside him, Shruti couldn't recognize himself anymore, forcing him, and thus Alucard, to fade out of existence. So Alucard spent 30 years killing the other three million souls inside of him until he could return to reality and his master. He undid his own unexistence. No matter how spoopy the threat, Alucard will show no mercy. He's just waiting for the day he meets a noble human warrior strong enough to end his unlife for good. 
But should he face a fellow monster, a fool who rejected their humanity like himself, he'll let loose the dogs of war, and all hell will sing. I'm a dog. Then you're dog food. <laughs> All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you want the same kind of confidence that lets you try to take over the world with a zombie army, first off, interesting. Secondly, try out Blue Chew. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. A little bit of extra confidence can take you really far in life. And that's why Blue Chew delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in chewable tablet form, right to your door. Yep, and did we mention you can get Blue Chew's tablets at a fraction of the cost of those other guys? Getting ready to go is simple. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Plus, it's all done online, which means no more awkward conversations with your doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATTLE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code BATTLE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thanks, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Just thinking about having mine. Then by all means, take a bite. Triumph, but it was I. Do you? <laughs> if I'm a dog, your dog. Vampire 
make me tame. stumps, but like the bloody drink, it was in vain. <laughs> finger guns! He may have been the king of the vampires in Helsing, but Dio had everything he needed to clip the bird of Hermes' wings. Alucard's strategy in most fights is to heal from an opponent's attacks until they get tired, then take advantage of an opening. But he couldn't do that here because Dio didn't really have any openings, and Alucard wasn't nearly as strong or as fast to compensate. Alucard could survive crashing that jet and move 1,500 times faster than sound. But scaling from stone free and silver chariot, the world could punch relativistic meteors and move 1,500 times faster than light. That would make Dio nearly 40,000 times stronger and 800,000 times faster than Alucard. Hell, Alucard couldn't even see or hurt the world in the first place because he's not a stand user. And since stone mask vampires from JoJo aren't weak to holy weapons like Helsing vampires are, Al's guns were more or less dead weight. Plus, Alucard just had no way to get past the time stop. Even if he did, somehow, Dio could just freeze him on contact. And considering Dio has taken punches from Star Platinum, Al would have had trouble doing damage even if he got the chance. Dio's far greater speed and power meant that, given enough time, he could realistically kill Alucard three million times in quick succession. Without any viable options for attack or openings to exploit, Alucard's soul-based regeneration meant he would run out of lives eventually, and level zero only sped up that process. Sure, that army's nothing to scoff at, but consider the time Dio's eye beams split those huge-ass clouds. Estimating the size of the clouds and the speed at which they moved, Dio's beams must have output an energy of over 10 megatons of TNT, enough to wipe out Alucard's army in one go, leaving him vulnerable. Just like when this other vampire, Walter, could have killed him by piercing his heart. Alucard's even admitted it himself. Hell, Alucard's army is filled with blood! You know, that thing that Dio uses to heal? But Wiz, what about Schrodinger? With his powers, Al can't die unless he chooses to. While Schrodinger's quantum immortality makes him impossible to kill normally, it is literally part of the story that Alucard cannot have Schrodinger's abilities and his greater array of powers at the same time, or else he'll no longer exist. We can't give him both Schrodinger and his standard powers without breaking the lore and rules of the character. Even if we did, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't help him kill Dio at all, so at best it'd be a stalemate. Until Dio hypnotizes Alucard, asks him about his powers, and forces him to eject Schrody like the rest of his souls. Shocking though it may be, Dio's overwhelming offense, impenetrable defense, and uniquely devastating abilities wore Alucard down until the No Life King had no lives left. Alucard got Dio'd! Uh, Boomstick, you tell the worst puns in the world. That's right, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. And hey, wait a minute, that was a pun, that's my territory! We talked about this! The winner is Dio. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. We really hope you enjoyed that episode of Death Battle. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, just click the box on the screen and check out Red vs. Blue Family Shatters, where the Red vs. Blue Zero crew gets up to all sorts of wacky antics. It's really fun. A lot of people who worked on Death Battle also worked on this show, so give it a watch. Thanks!